please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Let's retire rich. Isn't that the dream that most of us have? Well, dreams do come true if you put some planning behind them. At different stages of life, we all have different kinds of dreams. Right from buying homes and cars to pursuing a higher education, traveling the world, spending on the spouse and kids, the list is really endless. But each of these dreams has a financial cost attached to it. And that's where we come in with our insights. Hello and welcome to Season 5 of NSC Finviz powered by CNBC TV18. I'm your host Mridu Bhandari and we're coming to you from the Noida campus of HCL Technologies, a leading IT MNC that's offering technology solutions to global players around the world. Founded in 1976, HCL Technologies is one of the leading IT services organizations globally. Through delivery of innovative technology solutions, HCL has partnered with global enterprises to help them reimagine their businesses for the digital age. NSE Finviz, with its theme, Dream On, engaged with HCL employees in Noida to help them reimagine their own financial futures in the age of inflation. Financial literacy to me, uh, it would mean understanding how the market works so that we can make the best decisions in terms of the investments we are required to make, uh, the risk versus the return factors mostly, yeah. Financial literacy uh, means that where all should I invest, what all financial tools are available and how can I get better returns in the future. Financial literacy to me means how I can plan my expenditure, how to create a budget and uh, to plan my savings. So I think with the right assistance uh, for the same we can uh, obviously pl uh, plan a better future and uh, uh, a life after retirement. For people who are on a fixed monthly salary, uh, financial management, wealth management is very important uh, because you need a supplemental source of income to get yourself further in life. Welcome to NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18. Today we are coming to you from the HCL Technologies campus in Noida and our set of financial experts is all set to guide the employees of HCL to better financial health. Let's welcome the experts first, Tanvir Alam, founder of Fincart, Hello. and Gajendra Kothari, MD and CEO of Etika Wealth Management. And our core topic of discussion today is the importance of financial planning and evaluating the various vehicles of investment. Welcome gentlemen. Thank you. The importance of financial planning cannot really be overstated. So HCL Technologies here of course has a lot of first time employees, people who are just starting out in their careers. Uh, to begin with, give them a few tips each on how to start financial planning. Tanvir, would you like to start? So I will leave you with an acronym, okay? It's E-R-G-R-E. -E. First, the base of your pyramid should be emergency fund. Okay, it should be technically anywhere between 6 to 12 months of your monthly earning, <coughs> ideally 6 months. R is for risk protection, which means you should have a good online term insurance and also a good health insurance, irrespective whether the company is providing you or not. Emergency funds enables you to ensure that you do not disturb your long-term investments. Then the G and R, G represents your goal planning. You may have some short-term, some medium-term or some long-term goal. R is for retirement planning. Deliberately, I've kept it separate because most often we miss out this very important goal that is retirement planning. And last E stands for estate planning. In other words, is will writing <coughs> facility. You can write a will. So this actually pyramid, the first two helps you in protecting your hard-earned money. The next two enables you to grow your money. And the last one helps you to seamless transfer your money to your loved ones. And it goes into the right hand. Right. So Gajendra, uh Taking forward that conversation, how much is good enough to be put away every month for a person who's just starting out? And I'm sure uh, people who are in their first jobs are very tempted to spend all that they get and have a good time, enjoy life. So how much should really one put away every month to ensure that one meets everything that uh, Tanvir was just talking about? So if you can save maybe 50% of your savings, particularly those who are staying with your parents, I think that's the best way to start. Because the more you give your investments a heads up right now, uh, the, the higher the portfolio will become over a period of time. Uh, for those who have families to, to manage and other expenses like EMIs and other things are there, I would still say ensure that 10 to 
you are able to pull out from your uh, monthly uh, savings and put that to use. What one mistake which most of us make, right. and this is very important to bring out here, is most of us do, uh, the way we follow the pattern is earn and spend, and then whatever remain is saved, right? Mm. That's why 99% of us are not able to become rich. The day you change this equation to earn, save, spend, you earn 100 rupees, you may keep aside 20 rupees and invest in SIP or other tools, mm. and then remaining 80 you spend. I think I can guarantee you that in maybe 20 years time, you will all become rich, you will all be uh, you know, able to achieve all your goals. Uh, you know, it is it is important to start early, isn't it? Because uh, the earlier you start, the better it is. So Tanvir, give us a sense of what we can miss out on if we start saving, say, five years later or 10 years into our work life. Let me narrate a very incident. I had shared, I'd asked one of my friends almost about 10 years back when he was just below 30 to buy an online term insurance for one crore. Okay, that time the premium was less than about 10, 12,000 bucks for him. He did not do it. At almost 39, he is, he's come back, he says, I want to do insurance of two crores. His annual premium has moved from less than 10,000 to almost 19,000 something, 20,000, right? So he's paying literally double the money. Now giving you an example on, on investment, how you miss out in time horizon. Suppose uh, one of you started your SIP at the first job and you started at 25 and you did the 10,000 rupees for SIP every month on month. So in one year you save 120,000. In 10 years you save 120,000, sorry, 12 lakh. In 20 years it's 24 lakh rupees. So one of you started early at 25. The other friend said, okay, I'll start at 35. Hmm. Okay. So the 10,000 rupees who invested for 24 lakh and the other guys invested only 12 lakh. If you invest for 10 years, 12 lakh rupees, that amount would have been today, will be worth about 25 to 30 lakh rupees. So his 24 lakh investment is worth anywhere closer to 3 crores today. That is what you miss out That's if you the delay. The cost of delay is much bigger than you can ever anticipate. If you had to evaluate mutual funds versus equity versus gold versus real estate. Now, a first time investor has all of these options and is very confused on where to put his or her money. So how do you really decide which is the best vehicle for investing? My suggestion to you is that don't buy your first house when you're 25. Buy your first house maybe after 10 years uh, into your corporate life because then you're far more mature. Uh, you know, you have double income, you know where to buy, which place, etc. A lot of clarity is there. That's the first thing. As far as savings is concerned, where to start with, it all depends on your goals. If you have a short-term goal, you want to go for a vacation three years, five years down the line, most of your money in should be in safer asset class like FD or debt mutual funds. There should, not, there should be hardly any equity uh, for a short-term goal. If the goal is for longer tenure, five years, seven years, 10 years, 20 years, most of your money should be in equities and less of it. We are at the HCL Technologies campus in Noida today and our set of financial experts is engaging with the employees of HCL. In this segment, we are going to be talking about goal-based investing. So gentlemen, how do you really define long-term, medium-term, short-term as far as uh, financial instruments are concerned? You should always have a goal, jot it down, and then you will know what's the time frame. One thing which most of us fail is prioritize the goals. Accordingly, allocate your savings. If the shorter duration of the goal, go for a safe investment. But if the goal is like 8, 10, 20 years, you have a lot of time, then you can give the power of equity. In the shorter term, the equity markets may go up and down. But if you just stay there till your goal comes, you know, I think you'll be fine. But Tanvir, should retirement planning be the topmost goal for everybody? Anyone who starts working and enters the salary bracket should first be thinking and planning about retirement because a lot of us tend to think that let's enjoy life for, a, for, for the first couple of years and retirement is going to come much later. If you look at today's lifespan, our lifespan is increasing. So imagine a scenario where you have to retire at about 60 years and you have to fund your goal for 40 years. That is why starting right from the first job makes it a very imperative goal to you. All right, so let's take a question from uh, one of the employees here. Subhash Thakre, he's a consultant, he's an SAP consultant at HCL. Um, and in this segment, we are talking of dreams and how to achieve 
the dreams that the young employees here have. So, so Bhash's dream is to have enough money for retirement, say about five to six crores, uh, on a monthly basis, if he saves, say, about 8,000 rupees for the next 30 years, is that a good enough uh, you know, ratio to have? And, uh, and firstly, will five to six crores be enough 30 years down the line? You may start with 8,000, and there's something called step up SIP, where in every year, like your salary goes up by 5% or 8% or 10%, your savings should also go up. So this year, you may be saving 8,000. Next, you try and save 10,000, and then 12, and then 14, and keep on stepping up. I think you'll be absolutely. So, in percentage honest. terms, now, okay, everyone gets an increment mostly <laughs> every year. So, uh, in percentage terms, how much should one go on increasing one's investment year on year? See, it should be linked to your initial investment. See, ideally, India has a savings rate of 30%. Okay. So, if you're saving that much amount of money, you're well within that bracket. Worst, because of the increasing lifestyle and the increased consumerism, if it little goes up, you should not dip below 25%. All right. So Ashutosh Acharya, who's a lead engineer in the technology department here at HCL, asks, uh, my dream is to travel all over the world at least once. Uh, the amount he wants to accumulate is about 50 lakh to a crore. On a monthly basis, if he saves 10 to 15,000, say, for the next 5 to 10 years. 10 to 15,000, even for 10 years, will not work. I gave you an example. And this is not a hypothetical data that I spoke about. If you invest 10,000 rupees a month, 12 lakh in 10 years, that has become about 30 lakh rupees. Okay, And a return of about 12 to 13% annually. So even if that increased marginally, okay, so you would, at best, get to about 30, 40 lakh rupees in 10 years' time. So that 10,000 may not be sufficient. And if you're looking at what you could do is start with 10,000, and as Gajan said, keep increasing it every year to ensure that you get to that 50 lakh mark a crore. All right. Aditya Sardana, who's a pre-sales manager in the business acquisition group at HCL, asks, uh, the dream is to be a financial superhero for my family. And the amount I want to accumulate is 5 crore rupees. On a monthly basis, if I save 30,000, can that be achieved in the next 20 to 25 years? If you can invest for next 15, 20 years, 25, 30 years, if you can be there, just be there, I'm sure 5 crore, 8 crore, 10 crore is not a big sum. Uh, you know, I mean, you can easily be able to achieve that kind of corpus. And Warren Buffett once uh, said very, uh, you know, interestingly that our favorite holding period is forever. Yes. So, <laughs> So I think uh, that's a cue that all of us can possibly learn from. We are coming to you today from the Noida campus of HCL Technologies, and we're having a good time engaging with the employees of HCL Technologies. In this segment, our set of financial experts is going to answer all their queries face to face. So any of you who have questions for our experts, please raise your hands. Which is the best thing to invest in, uh, like uh, out of the PPF, mutual funds, or the equities? PPF is a safe product. Equity mutual fund is a risky product. So you can't compare. It will be unfair to compare that way. But now, if you look at how equity market behaves, equity market is like that wedding that you do, the vow that you live, live to live through the bad and good times. You're not flirting there. Now, equity mutual fund investment is like that marriage. If you invest for a period of one year, there's only a two-third probability you will make money. 60% probability you will make money. On a three-year basis, the probability increases to 75%. On a five-year basis, 85%. On a 10-year basis, 98% of the time would have made money. So on a 15-year, 100% of the time, in our history of India, we have never destroyed capital. So if you're investing in a 15-year product, might as well invest in ELSs, you will not lose money. All right, so to add diversity, let me uh, give a woman a chance. My question is on sectoral funds. How safe is it to invest in sectoral funds? What, uh, what is the time horizon for which one should consider investing in these funds? And what is the best way to invest in them? SIP or lump sum? Sectoral fund, typically, one people should invest if you have a very strong understanding of the sector. Sectoral fund, each sector will pass through a phase of good times and bad times. So the the only disadvantage of investing in a sectoral fund is that you have to time the entry and the exit of the sector. So if you have that strong understanding of that sector and you can actually time it well, by all means do it. Yes. 
decide. Uh, yeah. How to accumulate 50 lakh rupees to 1 crore in 3 years? What are the best 5 mutual funds today to invest in 2018? This is a big myth, you know. Many people come to us and say, you know, give us one, that one mutual fund which I should put my money. So it's, it's like a tip you're asking. And uh, just like all, even cricketers, all human beings have a good and bad times, all mutual funds have good and bad times. No fund manager has delivered consistently top performing returns across 20 year period, okay? All the, even the best of them have had five years of underperformance. So you should not be really changing funds like maybe in one year, uh, six months. The idea is to stay there. Just to add to what I said, you have to segregate your goals between short, medium, and long term. Right. Long term, you have to play the game very differently. It's like a test match and 50 overs match and a 20 over match. So if you have to play a 20 over match, you play very aggressively. A test match, you play conservatively. So hence, exactly your investment should be staggered. All right. One last question. Suppose I'm investing in a stock market, uh, in CAS, I'm identifying the uh, stock from the Nifty 50 or Nifty 100, and similarly, I'm investing in mutual fund as well. So which will give me the better return? Like, uh, I'm adding that particular stock, suppose I'm holding till the 10 or 20 percent return, then again, I'm selling and again buying. So which is the best option? Many people think that, you know, I can make more money by investing in stocks directly rather than going through mutual funds. Okay, this is a perennial question we get. Why should I pay that fees to the fund manager? You know, in order to be a good investor, you need to have three things, particularly stock market investor. You need to have interest in this field, which means you need to uh, be really motivated, go and understand, read balance sheets of these companies, understand what the company does, and many other things. Secondly, you need to have time, okay? Only having interest is not enough. You need to devote a lot of time and the third thing, knowledge, right? So if you have all the three, surely you can go out and try picking stocks on your own and then see your performance vis-a-vis -vis other fund managers, okay? But if you have any one of the three missing, don't, do, don't even attempt it, right. right? Then it's the best way to, is to go and give to a professional fund manager. See, remember one thing, a professional fund manager is doing this job 24 by seven mm. with a team of 50 other analysts who are there to support him. And if he's managing 50,000 crores rupees of yours, he has that cloud to get information which you or me would not find. Right. We'll always get the information, a stale information next in the newspaper. But these guys would have already acted upon it maybe a week earlier, right? So we, it's very difficult to beat the professionals in their game. All right, thank you so much, uh, all the employees at HCL for your wonderful participation here today. Thank you very much, gentlemen. With that, it's a wrap of this episode of NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18. We'll be back next time from another corporate campus, bringing you insights. Till then, dream on and plan for your dreams. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. The event was extremely crisp and concise and definitely very informative. So we got to know a lot of things that a beginner, you know, who's just entered and uh, started earning and working is not aware of. So it was very, very, very informative and very knowledgeable. Earlier to this session, I was just nothing for the investment. I was just saving the amount to my bank account just as it is. But now I'm planning to uh, invest in like mutual funds on the first priority. And then I will look for the PPFs and all because uh, my investment plans are for the long term. So the event was really good and helpful and it was, uh, uh, and it was very enlightening and uh, now I would know that where to invest and, and most importantly where not to invest. I was scared to invest into mutual funds and EL, ELSS. Now I have the clarity and probably this financial year itself I'll start investing into mutual funds and SIPs.